learning experiences. Effective hygiene promotion in Southeast Asia and the Pacific. This short clip highlights the key lessons learned from the two keynote papers and 11 case studies in the publication. The learnings are presented using the FOAMS framework. The acronym FOAMS is a useful tool for reflecting on your hygiene promotion program and seeing which areas could be improved. F stands for focus, O for opportunity, A for ability, M for motivation and S for sustainability. Let's start with focus. There are two parts. The first part is about the people you want to focus on. The second part is about the practices you need to focus on. Know your focus groups. To understand the environment in which practices occur, ask the following questions. Who can influence and support behaviour change? What would motivate behaviour change? What drivers motivate change other than health? And what are the key barriers to overcome, such as gender relations and workload for women? Also, research and pilot test behaviour change materials before going to scale. Next, make sure that you prioritise focus practices and avoid message overload. To accomplish this, focus on one or two behaviours at a time. A campaign or social marketing approach is suitable for promoting one specific hygiene practice, such as washing hands with soap. A campaign needn't always be organised at a national level. It can be delivered to a smaller target population, such as at the district level. To stimulate improvements in several hygiene practices, use participatory methods with your target groups. Discuss, negotiate and jointly identify problems and solutions for adoption of priority hygiene behaviours. For behaviour change, focus not on messages but on active understanding of high risk behaviours and good practices. Behaviour change techniques such as FAST, which stands for Participatory Hygiene and Sanitation Transformation, can and should be adapted to the local environment and context. FAST does not have to rely on health messages alone, but should instead focus upon target behaviours that will resonate strongly with the local audience. When working in schools, address the issue of menstrual hygiene management. As with other behaviours, invest time in finding out about current practices and identify and agree on what can be changed and how. part is opportunity. Here we have to ask, is it possible to practice the new behaviour in the specific, physical and social environment? This also has two components. We need to think about opportunity to change hygiene practices at the community level and the institutional level. To do this, ensure that there is opportunity to change behaviour at the community level. When households have a convenient and logical place where all hand washing materials are available, then actual hand washing practice is better. Building low cost or no cost hand washing stations can help individuals take the step from simply understanding the importance of hand washing to actually practicing hand washing with soap. Hygiene promotion that is focused on men has resulted in more support for hygiene in the household and more recognition of the hygiene related work undertaken by women in the home. And also, ensure that there is opportunity to change behaviour at the institutional level. For hygiene behaviour change to be successful in integrated WASH programs, there must be a specific hygiene promotion strategy, a dedicated budget for hygiene, and a monitoring and evaluation component for behaviour change and adequate skilled staff. Effective hygiene promotion requires well-trained and supported promoters who help bring about change, through community action planning and follow-up. This crucial role needs to be valued and people need to be provided incentives to take on this role. For example, through encouraging a career structure for volunteers to gradually enter paid positions. Consider the value of partnerships with the private sector. For example, food companies, banks and mobile phone companies, as well as soap manufacturers. Private companies are not usually natural partners for governments and NGOs, but there is huge potential to raise awareness about hygiene through partnerships with private companies at the national and local level. 
Partnerships need to be built in a way that protects negative developmental effects, for example, by not crowding out small local soap producers. The next part is about the ability to change behaviour. Here we have to ask, are people capable of carrying out the new behaviours? Do they have the practical knowledge and skills to practice the new behaviour? And can they afford the new practices in terms of money, effort and time? Enable adults and children to acquire the ability to practice good hygiene behaviour. Community role models can ignite interest among households to build their own hand washing stations. Community facilitators can show how to build a simple tippy tap or a plastic storage bucket with lid and tap or to make and market soap. Increasing knowledge combined with visible practical solutions helps to overcome concerns about the time or cost associated with practicing good hygiene behaviour. Participatory methods help community people to understand good and risky local hygiene practices and to plan, implement and monitor local action plans. Focus on small, easy, sequential steps and doable actions. Gradual change is easier to achieve. Move from the least desirable to the ideal practice, for example, by moving up the hygiene ladder. Be careful about funding the development of new behaviour change communication materials. These materials are usually in plentiful supply but are often not used. Find out what exists before reinventing the wheel. Learning tools can be self-made or photocopied and should be owned by the local people themselves so that they can be reused within the community. Use child-centred participatory learning approaches, including activities that are fun for children to promote hygiene behaviours. The next part is motivation. Think about what triggers or motivates people to change their behaviour. Motivate new behaviours drawing upon the specific drivers of change, not just health. The most powerful drivers of behaviour change are known to be disgust, the need to protect children, the need to fit in, comfort and the need to attract others. The fear of disease or improved health is not the only or strongest driver for practising good hygiene behaviours. It is important to take time to understand the local drivers of change before designing hygiene promotion programs. Health motivation comes from participatory assessments of good and risky local conditions and practices through a process of learning from peers rather than from top-down education. Outsiders can facilitate learning, not enforce it. The final yet critical component is to consider sustainability. The question to ask here is, are new behaviours still being practised? Determine if the behaviour has been sustained. Monitoring and evaluation needs to be done much better. There was very limited data and information in the case studies about whether or not behaviours have been sustained over time. More commonly, anecdotes from community members were supplied to suggest that change had occurred. Hygiene promotion programs should better assess existing conditions and practices at the start, during and at the end of a hygiene promotion program and again sometime afterwards. It is better to measure a few indicators over time than a lot only at the start and finish. In the planning of hygiene promotion programs, sufficient budget, training and staff time needs to be allocated to monitoring and evaluation so that the project can determine if practices have been sustained to the point of becoming habitual. Good monitoring and evaluation further requires good investigation methods. Answers to questions that relate directly to promoted practices result in inflated statistics because people know what the answer should be. Typical examples are questions on whether toilets are used, hands are always washed with soap, and what the critical times for hand washing are. Combining multiple simple techniques such as inspections, observations, discussions and pocket voting can serve to increase the accuracy of monitoring and evaluation findings. 
Monitoring and evaluation should be participatory and directly involve the community. This recommendation stems from the lesson that participatory learning gives better results. It also stems from the development principle that communities and schools have a right to know about their own conditions and practices at the start, and then be inspired to plan for improvements and monitor progress towards change over time. Project staff can facilitate the gathering of monitoring and evaluation information by the community members themselves. We need much better information on the cost of hygiene promotion programs. Only one case study included some information on cost. Without better information on cost, it will be difficult to advocate for greater priority for hygiene promotion. to read the papers this summary draws upon, please download the free publication Sharing Experiences Effective Hygiene Promotion in Southeast Asia and the Pacific on the WaterAid website.